GroupWise Teamworks 18.2 is now available and there are some great new features and functionality that have been added. This video will focus on the new content editing option that goes hand in hand with the file handling capabilities that have been added. Content editing will allow your users the option of editing various types of documents live, in real time, at the same time. Very handy if you have several people who need to edit different parts of a large report that's due tomorrow, for example. I'll show you how that's done in just a moment. For now, here's a summary of what's required and some tips for making it work. First, you need a working Teamworks setup. A large or small deployment, either will work fine. Then you need the software for the Content Editor appliance. And then deploy it. Use the same method you use to deploy the other appliances. You need to make sure you create the additional drives, one for data and one for logs. And then basically follow the wizards. I strongly recommend you use third-party certs. We can make the self-signed certs work, but it's awkward at best. Another tip, make sure you use the DNS names rather than IP addresses of your servers when you're linking them together. Okay, once the content editor appliance is up and running, you need to log in on port 9443 as user VA admin. Then click the configuration icon down here. In this box is where you add the host name of your main Teamworks server. As I mentioned, avoid an IP address here, it just doesn't work. Next, we need to log into the Teamworks server. Again, port 9443 and user VA admin. We're going to select the config icon down here again. Note the new menu option at the bottom of the list, web-based document editing. Click it. Then check the box here to enable it for your system. Also add the DNS hostname of the content editor appliance. Click the test connection button to confirm that it's working. If you're still using the default self-signed certificates, you'll see some pop-up information with links and instructions on how to export and import the certs between the two appliances. It can be done, but there will be additional client-side issues that require manual intervention. Third-party certs are just easier. I'm going to switch back to the home page and click on the digital certificates icon here. This is where you would set those up. You'll want to select the web application certificates from this drop-down list. Here you can see the self-signed certificate that came with the install. I added this commercial wildcard cert here in PFX format and then set it as the active one. After a restart, I was good to go. Of course, I imported the certificate on the content editor appliance as well. That's a very quick run through of the configuration steps. Uh, but now let's have a look at the client. I'll log in as a user and click on a room here in the left panel. You see the conversation here. It can be expanded to show replies. You can add a reply if you want, you know, generally work in the, in the system. If I click back on the room, notice the new option here in the right corner. I'm looking at the conversation display. I'll click on the files option and now I see a completely new space. I can add files, I can create folders and subfolders, and basically create a library of files that are associated with this room. For example, Anita already has some files and folders created. All files in this room are available to everyone who has access to the room. If it's a public room, then everybody can access the files. In a private room, only the members of the room can see and access the files. Adding a file to a room is a separate operation from adding an attachment to a conversation post. Um, for example, here in the Kirk versus Picard room, we can see that Carla made a post with an attachment. That attachment is only associated with that post. If you want to add a file and associate it with the room, then you simply click on the Files menu, then click to add a file, browse out and find the one you want, and it's as easy as that. Now we know how to find files and how to add files and how to create folders to organize those files. Let's explore editing a file. If I open this folder, you see a few sample files. These files can be manipulated with the three dot menu at the end of the line. Along with the delete, rename, download, and view is the edit option. One note, it, the edit option will only show up on the file types that can be edited. If you don't see the option, then that file type is probably not supported. 
When I select the Edit option, the Teamwork server fires up a link to the Content Editor server, and I'm now in Edit mode. Down here on the bottom of the page, I can see that only one user is currently working on this file, me. If another user opens that file for editing, then that number will increment and you will be able to see who else is working on the file. When the other user starts making edits, there's a little tag with their name so you know who is doing what at any given time on this document. As you can see, there are lots of tools and features available for editing. If this were a spreadsheet, then you'd see a different set of tools as appropriate to a spreadsheet. Once you're done, make sure you save your work with the button here. Then you can simply hit the X up here to close out and go back to the Teamworks interface. As you can see, we've packed a lot into this release and we hope you find it both easy to use as well as helpful in collaborating with your team. Thanks for watching.